Complete written instructions are included with each kit. Be sure to read and follow these instructions carefully before installing. You will need the proper cable preparation tools and a clean burning propane gas torch. For your own safety, please pay attention to the following precautions before beginning the installation. Failure to follow these warnings could result in injuries caused by fire, explosion, or electrical hazard. First, make sure the area you are working in has good ventilation. Check all torch connections for leaks before lighting. This product is covered by a material safety data sheet. Before installing any electrical accessory, read and follow the safety requirements and the written instructions. In addition, be sure to follow the safety instructions established by your own organization. The laboratory demonstration that follows is not intended to represent field installation conditions or your specific safety procedures. According to the voltage class of the cable, simply cut back the jacket material, referring to the dimensions listed in your installation instructions. Care must be taken not to nick or cut the dielectric when removing the semicon. When working with a copper tape or LC shielded cable, you should now install the ground braid. Flare the moisture blocked end of the ground braid and place it onto the metallic tape butted up to the cable jacket. Attach the braid to the shield by placing two wraps of the spring clamp over the braid and shield, then bend the braid back over the spring. Continue to wrap the spring over the braid. Tighten the spring by twisting it in the direction it is wrapped and secure it with the copper foil tape provided in your installation kit. Two alternatives to the copper tape or LC shield cable are the wire shield cable and the unishield cable. With a wire shield cable, at this time you will need to bend the drain wires back over the jacket and away from the cable end. With the unishield cable, bend the drain wires back over the semicon as shown in this graphic. If a lug is to be used on any of the cable types, install it at this time. Clean and deburr the lug. If the step between the lug barrel and the insulation is greater than 1 8 inch, taper the insulation to meet the lug barrel. If you are installing 25 to 35 kV terminations with a lug, you will need to build up the diameter of the lug barrel. Make sure the surfaces are dry and clean before proceeding. Now, using light tension, wrap two layers of red sealant around the lug barrel. Place the shim tube over the red sealant butted against the end of the insulation. Set your torch pressure according to the manufacturer's instructions. Light the torch, making sure you have a 12 inch bushy flame. Shrink the shim into place. Apply heat using a smooth brushing motion, keeping the flame moving to avoid scorching. Work the flame around all sides of the shim, applying uniform heat. If you are working with 5, 8, or 15 kV, no shim will be required. Now abrade the insulation, if necessary, to remove any embedded semicon. Then, using an approved solvent, clean the cable as shown. Next, apply the stress relief material at the semicon cutback. Remove the backing from the short angle cut piece of the SRM. Place the tip of the SRM at the semicon cutback and stretch it to approximately one half of its original width. Tightly wrap three to four layers so that the semicon step is filled. Make sure the SRM overlaps both the insulation and the semicon by no more than one quarter inch. Taper the SRM down to meet the insulation. Tear or snap off any excess material. Follow the same procedure if you use unishield or wire shield cable, making sure that the step between the semicon and insulation is filled. 
Position the black stress control tube one inch from the jacket cutback. Begin shrinking at the ground end and work the torch with a smooth brushing motion around the tube working toward the lug end. Make sure heat is applied uniformly around the entire tube. Inspect your installation visually. Look for wrinkles and flat spots and reheat if necessary. Check for complete shrinkage by looking for uniform wall thickness around the end of the tube. Next, complete the grounding of the cable. For the copper tape or LC shield cable, lift the ground braid away from the cable jacket. Using an approved solvent, clean the jacket for two and one half inches below the jacket cutback point. Remove the backing from the red sealant tape found in your installation kit. Using light tension, wrap two layers of red sealant onto the jacket under the braid. Lay the braid back over the jacket and press the solder blocked section of braid into the sealant. Using light tension, wrap two more layers of the red sealant over the braid and the first two layers of sealant. For the unishield or wire shield cables, the drain wires need to be lifted away from the cable jacket at this time. As with other cables, clean the jacket with an approved solvent. Remove the backing from the red sealant. Using light tension, wrap two layers of red sealant onto the jacket under the drain wires. Lay the drain wires evenly back over the jacket and press them into the red sealant. Using light tension, wrap two more layers of red sealant over the braid and the first two layers of sealant. If using a lug or lug with shim on any cable type, you now apply the red sealant tape on the lug barrel or over the shim. Build up the lug diameter to the cable insulation diameter and overlap the insulation by one half inch. If not using a lug, wrap two layers of the red sealant onto the cable insulation as shown. Remember, sealant will not prevent water ingress between the strands of the conductor. Now position the red HV tube at the bottom edge of the red sealant on the jacket. If working on a unishield or wire shield cable, twist the drain wires to make a ground lead at this time. Begin shrinking at the ground end and work toward the lug. Allow the tube to cool enough to touch before proceeding. If necessary, trim excess tubing from the lug area as shown. Inspect your installation. Reheat any flat spots or wrinkles. With this, the indoor termination is complete. For outdoor terminations, now is the time to install the skirts or sheds. According to the voltage class of the cable, determine the number of total skirts you will need. The correct number and positioning are shown in the instructions. Position the first skirt and shrink it into place. Hold the edge of the skirt lightly with pliers. Shrink as shown. 
only the collar will shrink. If additional skirts are to be installed, position them so that they are four and a half inches between the top ends of the skirts. Make sure the skirts are all facing in the same direction. Shrink them in place. Check that the skirts have been evenly shrunk and appear symmetrical with no tilt or sag. If the termination is to be used in the inverted position, make sure that the skirts are also installed in an inverted position. Your outdoor termination is now complete.